Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We are going to have some fun by converting decimals to binary. This is the decimal to binary conversion tutorial and we've already covered how to convert from binary to decimal so it makes sense that we can go in the other direction as well. Now some people like to rely on charts where you find the decimal number and it tells you what the binary is for that and that's fine as long as you've always got that chart around. So unless you can, uh, I don't know, tattoo it on your hand or something, it's probably better for you to be able to do this on your own. In time, you're going to know subnet masks so well that when you see a decimal number like 255, you're going to know the binary equivalent immediately. Even if you don't want to memorize them, you're going to be working with them so much for studying for studying, and then for on-the-job experience, you're just going to know them. But until you get to that point, it helps to know the decimal to binary conversion process. So that's what we're going to cover. We're going to choose a random random number to start with. And you can do this too. Choose any number between 1 and 255. I'm going to choose 120, and I'm going to convert that to binary. The first thing I do is I need to write down all of the decimal values for each of the bit positions. If you remember when we converted binary to decimal, we looked at 2 and we looked at the power of 2 to 0, which equals 1, and 2 to 1, which equals 2, and 2 to the second, which equals 4, and 2 to the third, which equals 8. Well, we've written down these values here. And then next to each value, we're going to write down, just, I'm just going to make a, a little square here, which represents each of the eight bit positions in an octet. All right, so these are our tools, the decimal values and our eight bit positions. And the process is really easy. All we're going to be doing is really subtracting. So we start on the left-hand side and we ask ourselves a question. Will 128 fit into 120? In other words, is it equal to 120 or is it less than 120? If the answer is no, which it is in this case, in the bit position for that decimal value, we put a zero and we move on to the next bit position. So then we ask ourselves the same question. Will 64 fit into 120? Well, the answer is yes. If the answer is yes, we put a 1 in the bit position, and then what we go ahead and do is we subtract 64 from 120. And that gives us 56. And then we keep repeating this process until we get this 56 down to 0. So we've already gone through the first two pos bit positions on the left here, so we continue where we, where we left off. Now we ask ourselves, well, will 32 fit into 56? The answer is yes. So we write a 1 there, and we subtract 32 from 56 to give us 24. Carrying on, we ask ourselves the same question with 16. Will 16 fit into 24? The answer is yes. We write a 1. We subtract 16 from 24, and we know that's 8. And then we get to the next position and we see, well, will 8 fit into 8? The answer is yes. And we write down a 1. And now we're done because now when you subtract 8 from 8, you've got 0. So you have no more number to work with. The remaining bit positions, since we didn't use them, we just put zeros in there. And so in our octet, the binary representation of 120 is this, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so 120 um, is not a number, a decimal number that you will commonly see in a subnet mask. Um, however, it helps to choose any random number to work through this process. The more you do this, the better you're going to get at it. Like I said, uh, the more you subnet, uh, the more familiar you'll become with this process, and soon you're just going to know what they look like. Okay, so that is the process of converting a decimal to a binary. Go ahead and practice, and thanks for watching.